we have already established in the previous video a uh, basic plot formula if you haven't seen the video uh, check it create a new scene uh, name it spawn ground uh, spawn ground uh, uh, sorry about that uh, yes we will attach a new script to it called spawn ground uh, save it in scripts and uh, we will delete the comments it looks untidy to me at least okay so constant ground spawner uh, we'll preload our ground scene over here uh, we'll create another constant ground width we already know that our ground width is of 80 pixels uh, where spawn position is equal to global position this is where uh, the ground will spawn and an on ready where player will put the player get parent dot get node player if spawn position dot distance to player dot global position is less than 300 we'll spawn our ground we'll create a new function called spawn ground and we will function spawn ground okay uh yes where spawn ground instance will create a new instance uh, spawn ground instance is equal to ground spawner dot instance yes and we'll add the child to our current node spawn ground instance and spawn ground dot global position dot x is equal to spawn position dot x oh, sorry about that oh. dot x yes and we will increment our spawn position by our ground width spawn position dot x is equal to spawn position dot x plus ground width now let's run the scene and uh, first we'll add it to our world scene we'll save the script in scripts uh, sorry we'll save the scene in scenes we will instance the scene in our world scene we'll put the ground as a child of spawn ground and we'll try it wow so it's working we have an endless ground i'll show you i'll zoom out and show you to you how it, it's working see uh if the distance is less than 300 a uh, new ground gets generated the distance between the spawn position and the player so now we'll have to delete the sprout uh, the ground that which we have passed we'll do that by attaching the sc uh, script to ground and we'll delete the commands and okay if uh, we'll yes if global position dot distance to well first we'll create a, our on ready variable player on ready variable player is equal to get parent dot get parent i hope you are understanding the tree structure here 
get node player if global position dot distance to player dot global position is greater than 300 and player dot global position dot x is greater than global position dot x that uh, it, it means that if the player is ahead of the ground uh, position ground global position q free means delete it uh, deletes the node okay so now uh, it's done our basic concept of endless runner is done we just have to change it to suit our needs uh, new ground is spawning the earlier one is getting deleted now we'll create some variations in the script so that uh, our ground gets little bit variations okay so we'll do the same for the y axis spawn ground instance global position dot y is equal to spawn position dot y and we'll add a randomize function what does that is randomizes the seed so every time we use the random range function we get a new number new random number spawn position dot x is equal to spawn position dot x plus random range ground width comma ground width plus 50 what we what this random range does is gives us a random number between ground width and ground width plus 50 okay and spawn position dot y is equal to spawn position dot y plus random range between minus 50 to positive 50 not a random seed oh. 50 minus 50 50 not 40 okay so now we'll get a little bit variations in our game uh, i hope you are understanding this concept it's very easy Okay, now uh, we can use two blocks instead of one so that the player gets a bit more run time. What I'll do is change the background color so the graphs and the coordinate system can be seen easily. We'll go to environment and set the default color. And we can see it more easily now and we'll set and now we'll get, get two blocks instead of one i forgot to change the ground width to 160 because we're using two blocks now okay now we will try using three blocks and oh see now we'll, i again forgot to change the ground width to 240 now we'll be getting three blocks yes okay now uh, we'll change the control so that the player is always moving right and all the player has to do is press the jump key uh one second what am i supposed to do here uh one second sorry about that uh yes we'll remove the input action press ui left and else velocity is equal we'll remove that and that and this also and we'll remove this if checking for the right key and we'll indent it towards the left and yes all we have to do is press space now 
so our basic concept of endless runner is done i hope you understood everything it's very easy if you have any doubts ask me in the comments below